Hello and welcome to the Village Chapel in this season after Pentecost on this Wednesday. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, in your goodness, keep us, we pray, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in mind and body, may accomplish with free hearts those things which belong to your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 18. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, <clears throat> go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen, not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. This reading, I hope, is familiar to all of you. It's what we read every Ash Wednesday. This is the gospel that Jesus wants us to know from right there in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount about how he wants us to honor God and to do what is good, not so that we will receive the, the praise and the acclaim of people around us. That should be the last thing on our minds. Rather, we play to an audience as Christians of one, and that is God. When I look out here in this empty congregation right now of the village chapel, there is only one person there, and that is God watching what I'm doing, what you're doing. We play to an audience of one. And that one is the one who created us and who loves us more than anyone else could. Don't we want to do everything we can for him? And not for all the people around us, people like us who are fickle, who might one day love us and one day not, depending upon how much we please them. 
Why would we bother trying to impress other people when our Lord and Savior, God Almighty, the Holy Spirit are there to guide and lead us into what is true and what is truly love. And so Jesus is saying, don't worry about impressing the crowds and the masses. When you do something that's good, do it privately. Don't worry about getting any credit for it. How often in the church are we in that kind of situation where you're offered the opportunity as a volunteer to do something that maybe nobody else uh, around you will recognize or know that you did it? Maybe one or two, but maybe not even them. But it's an opportunity to serve And do you ever question, well, if I did this, who would know it? There's a a great scene in the play and the movie, A Man for All Seasons, uh, won the Academy Award for Best Picture, 1966. It's the story of Sir Thomas More, who was, for a time, Chancellor of England under Henry VIII. But he was a Roman Catholic, and Henry was trying to take the Church of England away from the Pope and make it his own, and Thomas More would not go with him to do that. And for that reason, Thomas More was beheaded by Henry VIII. But there's a great scene early in the play and the film, where uh, Thomas More is talking to a young Cambridge graduate who wants so desperately to, to have a prestigious position at the court of Henry VIII. And of course, Thomas More is there on the King's Council. And so he wants him, he wants Thomas More to give him a a position there. And More says, I'm not going to do that, but I've got a job for you. We've opened a new school here in Chelsea, and there's a place for you as an instructor. And the young man says, a teacher. And Thomas More says, You might be a great teacher. You're well educated. And the young man says, and if I were, who would know it? And Thomas More says, you, your family, your friends, God. That's not a bad audience. And we might ask ourselves, when we do what we do for the sake of the church, for the sake of God, for the sake of our own souls, for the people that we love, what is uppermost on our minds? And who is our audience? Think of that audience of one, God, who loves us so much and wants to bring out the best in each one of us. And the Holy Spirit is there exactly to do exactly that. Thanks be to God.